Are you thirsty for God's presence in your life? On today's Move Your Mountain, we're going to see how out of your innermost being flows rivers of living water. We're also going to take Holy Communion together, so make sure you get your elements. We're going to have some powerful anointed worship. We're going to pray over all of your requests today, believing God for His presence to fill your life today. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us on Move Your Mountain today. I'm Pastor Gary Mitrick here with Pastor Myra Bell, yeah. Pastor Jonathan Schaefer, Pastor Rebecca Luker. And I tell you, we're going to move some mountains today. Amen. Amen. So get ready. Get, get your prayer requests set. If you haven't called in, the number's there, 888 Six six five four four eight three. Reach out to one of our prayer partners. We'll agree in prayer, but man, I am set and ready to move some mountains. <laughs> I'm excited about what God's going to do for you today. Mm -hmm. I have an expectancy. I come mm. expecting God come to on. move, not for us, but for you because you've tuned in. There's somebody watching and, and, and you were tempted to change the channel. Don't change the channel <laughs> because God has something special for you. Stay tuned and watch what he does. He's going to do a work on the inside and it's super natural. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it because he has some great things ahead for us. Make sure you get your Bible out, get a notepad and a pen and take down some notes as we're talking because I believe the Holy Spirit can pour things into your heart as we're speaking and you'll be like, wow, I'm amazed. The Holy Spirit has given me all these things. Allow the Lord to speak through you today as we join together. Bring the word, bring your prayer requests. We're going to have just a great time in God's presence yes, today. And remember, we're going to take Holy Communion together. So get an element, a cracker, a piece of bread, some juice in a cup, because we want you to join and participate with us. Well, this is one of my favorite stories. You know, the first time when I was 18 years old, I went to the Holy Land. I was asked to bring my very first message at Jacob's Well, mm -hmm. right here. You know, a lot of things can move, but wells don't move. Amen. <laughs> the well is still there in the same place it was thousands of years ago. Mm -hmm. So let's look at this powerful story in John 4. It says, And he, Jesus, he left Judea, and he departed again into Galilee. But he needed to go through Samaria. Mm -hmm. King James says he must mm -hmm. go through Samaria. So he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now, Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, he sat down by the well. And it was about the sixth hour. And the first thing that we need to understand is that most Jews would have gone around. They would have not gone through the same place that Jesus did. But you and I, number one, we've got to be sensitive and led by the Holy Spirit. Jesus evidently knew his father had a job for him to do there at the well. And he was led by the Spirit while all the disciples went to Eaton Park <laughs> to get something to eat. Jesus went through Samaria and sat with a woman at a well. Amen. And this is a powerful, powerful truth. I, I more lately uh, have been wondering how much easier 
my life could be, the, the, the work that I have to do, the different mm -hmm. responsibilities that I have, how much easier my life might be if I just yield and surrender to the wind of the Holy Spirit. In the chapter right before this, in the Gospel of John, chapter three, Jesus says how the, the Spirit is like wind and, and you don't see where he comes from or where he's going, but you can see the effects. And he says, so too are those born of the Spirit. And so I often wonder if I just yielded myself and surrendered myself to what God is doing moment to moment, I might not necessarily do the things I had planned. Mm -hmm. Like Pastor Gary said, most people, most Jews would have planned to go around Samaria. But will I be able to accomplish so much more greater things, not by my power, not by my might, but by the spirit, says the Lord. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think about it, that it was something so mundane that mm -hmm. Jesus was getting ready to do. He sat down because he was tired. There he, is. he needed some water because he was thirsty. He was tired and thirsty. So many times when God would use you most, if you let him lead you, mm -hmm. it'll be during those times, maybe at the grocery mm -hmm. store. Maybe it's wow. somebody you'll see along the way. Maybe it's the contractor that you asked to come in to give you an estimate and you have opportunity yeah. to share with that contractor. It doesn't matter when it is. It doesn't matter who it is. I think about it. They had that prejudice. The Jews had that prejudice, but Jesus didn't have that prejudice mm, mm. against the Samaritans. If, I, if I'm not mistaken, it took two days to go out of the way for them to walk around Samaria. That's how much they disliked them, but how Jesus had a need to go there. Come on. God had a need for him to go there. Listen, I don't care. You might not feel like doing it, but when you are led by the mm. spirit, mm. and it doesn't have to be some mystical, spooky thing. Ooh, no, it's just God leading you. Okay, well, I'm going to go not to this uh, uh, Walgreens. I'm going to that Walgreens or this CVS or no matter where it is, God will lead you and he'll use you in a miraculous way if you allow him to just lead. Amen, yeah. amen. That's why a lot of people I notice too, they'll do some, let's say out there stuff and then blame it on the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But that nevertheless, we still, like, like I had a pastor tell me one time, I'll take wildfire over no fire. <laughs> and so being led of the spirit, sometimes yeah. it, you're, it's going to lead you like Jesus went through areas you may not be planning on going or want to go, mm -hmm. but it's always effective. That's right. And the more that we yield to the Holy Spirit, the more easy, because you might say, well, I, I don't know how to hear his voice. I don't know how to do this. You just pray. You seek mm. the Lord. You begin to step out in faith. And then each time you're going to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit more clear and more clear. There are so many people out there that need the Jesus that you have to offer. Just about every time you turn around, you will be able to pour into someone's life. You'll be able to affect their lives in a good way for the kingdom of God. All you have to do is say, okay, Lord, I'm yours. I'm yielded to you. I want to do what you want me to. And sometimes that's the hardest part because that means we have to step out of the way. We have to put our agenda to the side. We have to say, I know I'm tired right now. I know I'm weary right now, but God, I know that you have a purpose for me to be at this place at this time because there's someone you want me to speak into their lives. I can't tell you the number of times when somebody has done that for me. How could I say, no, God, I don't want to do that for someone else. There are people that need to hear about the hope mm -hmm. that you and I have. They need to hear. They're at their wits end. They don't know where to turn. But because Jesus is living inside of you, when you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit saying, go, and you go to meet that need, man, it can totally transform their life. And not only theirs, but the people that are around them, their families' lives, whoever is touching that one individual, I want to encourage you, listen to the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Don't put it off. Listen, and you're going to, you're going to get blessed as well. Cause I've learned when you step out by faith and you do that, it becomes more of a blessing to you sometimes than it is to that person that you're speaking to. So be encouraged today. Amen. Step out by faith. Do what God's called you to do. Go out of what would be the norm of where you are and be obedient to the voice of God when he's calling you to go a, a different direction than what you normally would. Amen. 
heed those hunches. Because sometimes it's a still, small voice. Yes, sir. Then it says in verse 7 of John 4, a woman of Samaria, she came to drink, to draw water. And Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you being a Jew ask a drink from me, a Samaritan, a woman? For Jesus, for Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. And Jesus answered and he said to her, oh, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. And Jesus answered and he said to her, he said, whoever drinks of this water, they'll thirst again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst because the water that I shall give him shall become in him a fountain of yes, water sir. springing up into Hallelujah. everlasting yeah. Life. Are you thirsty today? I'm not talking about natural water. I'm telling you there's a water that will quench your thirst that only Christ can give you. He calls it the living water. And my second point is that receive today that living water and you will never, ever, ever thirst again. And there is no greater place to be than to be satisfied by the living water. Uh, on the Mount of Olivet, uh, uh, when, when Christ was teaching, he said, if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you will be satisfied, you will be filled. How many of us have run around looking for love in all the wrong places or things in all the wrong places. You've been that other kind of thirsty looking for love in all the wrong places. Well, this God will satisfy you with a love in you, his presence in you that nothing else can surpass. I've heard people say, I, I used to get high, but there's no high like this one. <laughs> I can't relate to that, but nevertheless, there is nothing that will compare with what Christ wants to do on mm -hmm. the inside of you. He wants to satisfy you so that you don't go from tragedy to tragedy or, or trouble to trouble. Oh, we have troubles in this life. Mm -hmm. But in that in-between time, that river of living cool. water rising up in you will not only satisfy you, it will quench that thirst for anything but him. You say, well, I don't want to be so heavenly minded that I'm no earthly good. <laughs> it's not like that. What we're saying is Jesus Christ will satisfy you with the living water that will rise up out of your belly, mm -hmm. out of you. And there's just nothing like it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Like and, and I don't believe that there's, I don't believe that you can be so heavenly minded that you would be of no earthly good. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it's so important to grab a hold of this point of receiving the living water, because I think that's what a lot of people think. Oh, I'm just going to become wishy-washy or mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. spiritual person. I don't know that if you've taken a look at the world around you, but the world actually might need some heavenly minded people going out and releasing this living water. Because later in John, in John chapter seven, Jesus talks about how this, this, this well will, will not just be a spring welling up to eternal life. That's the vertical connection because first you have to get the vertical connection, right? Mm -hmm. But then it will flow out into the world around you. And right now, brothers and sisters, our world needs living water. Mm -hmm. That's right. The water 
that the world is feeding people is poisoned and it doesn't satisfy. Mm -hmm. It's like well, whenever you're out at sea, they tell you don't drink the water when you get thirsty because it's brackish. It has salt in it. And when you drink salt water, it makes you thirstier. It doesn't quench the thirst. And I believe that's what a lot of people in our day and age are struggling with. They, they, are, they are drinking from a well, a salt spring that mm -hmm. not only doesn't satisfy, mm -hmm. which creates incredible frustration, yeah. but makes you thirsty for more. And yeah. until people have a different option, they're going to keep going back to the thing that doesn't satisfy yes. them and make them more thirsty. But yeah. when we hunger and thirst for the righteous water that Jesus gives us, then that's we'll right. be satisfied. That's right. And that goes back to our first point of being led by the spirit, mm -hmm. because when you're led by the spirit, you can offer them and show them where that living <laughs> water comes from. Mm. And it is from Jesus. Why are we so uh, accepted of taking something that's second rate, second best, when Jesus says, I've come to give you living water, something that's going to satisfy you, not for the time, for, heaven and earth is going to pass away, but his word is going to remain yes. forever. We need something that is going to satisfy us long past the time that we're gone in eternity. Jesus Christ is that one that can satisfy not only us who are believers, but those who are in the world as we tell them about Jesus, as we give them that resource where they can go, they can too be filled with that living water that yes. never runs dry. You know, this woman, she was like, I've been coming to this well for so many years. Our ancestors have come to this well. It's still producing water. So what is this living water that you're talking about? And Jesus said, it's not something in the natural, it's something spiritual. We can say that to this world. You can search for things that are in the natural, but there is something supernatural that God can give you, God can supply. He can give you hope when the situation looks hopeless. He can give you healing when the doctor said healing's not gonna come. He can give you freedom from addiction when the counselor says, I don't see any way out. Jesus can give you something greater than this world can ever possibly offer you, that living water. And not only can he give it to you, but to those whose lives that you're led by the Spirit to speak into. And John, John 7 says that that living water is referred to, this is the Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit inside of you. So as you are filled with the Holy Spirit, then it will be able to flow out of you and be a blessing yes. to others. Yeah. And I love later on in this story in John 4, verse 23, Jesus gives to me one of the greatest revelations in the New Testament, mm -hmm. not to the religious leaders, mm -hmm. not to his disciples, mm -hmm. but to a woman who had five husbands <laughs> and the man she was living with was not her husband. Mm -hmm. And he says this, but the hour is coming mm -hmm. and now is that when the true worshipers mm -hmm. will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Yes. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. Mm -hmm. God is a spirit and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and and in truth. Yes. You know, if you are a true worshiper, you won't have to go looking for God. Mm -hmm. God will come looking for you. Yes. Yes. Be a yes. true worshiper. Those that worship Him must worship Him in spirit. 1 Corinthians 14, 14 says, He that prays in tongues, prays in the spirit. So when you worship God in your prayer language mm -hmm. as well as in the natural, in truth, mm -hmm. you then are a true worshiper. Yeah. Yeah. And you might be yeah. watching and saying, well, I don't have that prayer language. Right now, why don't you just receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit? Yes. Why don't you just open yourself up? You know, we're talking about uh, water and being filled. You know what? The, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4 that we're a vessel. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes you've got to get some, 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 bad, some bad ideology, some bad theology out of you and make room so that God can pour into you to the point where you're now overflowing. So why don't you right now just take a moment and just say, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. If, that, oh. if that's something you've never experienced, the baptism in the Holy Spirit, just say, God, fill me with your Holy Spirit. 
pour out in me. Or if, if you've experienced it and it feels like you're dry again and just say, Lord, fill me afresh. Overflow the banks of my life with your living water that springs up into eternal life. Overflow from my life so that, so that I can live off of what's inside, but I can share with those outside of me from the overflow. God, fill me up right now. Bless me with the gift of tongues. Bless me with the gift of words of wisdom and words of knowledge and working of miracles and working of power. God, fill me with your Holy Spirit right now. My Let God. your joy overflow out of me. Let your peace overwhelm me right now. Just let it flow in Jesus name. Let it flow because God wants to, he wants you to step into that true worship dimension. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Pastor Rebecca and Pastor Myra do such a great job of, of leading us into the presence of God. You don't have to wait for them That's to open right. their mouth. Sure. You can begin to open your mouth and just let the flow of the spirit begin to take over. And like Pastor Gary said, God is, he's, he's scanning the earth. You don't have to go looking for him because he's looking for you. Amen, amen. And you know, I think sometimes we equate worshiping with music, with a specific song. Worshiping is giving God praise, mm. giving him his worth, what he is due, the honor that he is due. Whether you're just speaking it out, it could be a song that you, you just sing unto the Lord. It doesn't have to be one that's pre-written. It can be something that comes, a song that you sing from your spirit that the Holy Spirit just deposits in you. But you begin to say, God, I know you're worth this. You have got, done so much for me. I have to honor you. You are sovereign. You are Lord. You are my King. You are worthy of all the praise that I could give you when I think about the things that I've come from and where you've brought me from and you're still steadfast, you're still unmovable. The things that shake me don't shake you. And you begin to let that worship arise, telling him how worthy he is. That's when things begin to change. You don't have to worry about, well, I can't sing this way. I can't follow the worship at my church. You make your own song to the Lord. You praise him even when no one else around you is praising him. You begin to praise him. You know, and Pastor Gary, to your point, as far as the Holy Spirit speaking through us, you know, there are times the Bible says when we don't know what to pray, but we don't know what to say. So we need the Holy Spirit to come and speak through us and pray through us. I have been there. I've been times there when I, I don't even have words and all I do is say, mm, I just groan. That's part of the Holy Spirit because you just don't know. You're, you're speechless. Believe it or not, I can get that way. And you're just speechless before the Lord. And the Holy Spirit comes and it gives you that mm. prayer language that you begin to pray and it goes directly to the throne of God and He knows exactly what you are in need of. Can I encourage you today? Let the Holy Spirit take control of your life. Let him take control of your walk. Let him take control of those that you interact with. Let him take control even of that worship because the Holy Spirit can bring to your remembrance the greatness of God and the great things that he has done. And as a result, it springs up within you and it just overflows that worship and that praise. Yeah, yeah. And I think about as you were talking about how a lot of times we will relate it to music mm -hmm. yeah. only, but that passage that Pastor Gary just taught on said that God is looking for the true worshipers. Mm -hmm. And so many of our churches are filled with people who praise God. Yeah. They'll lift their hands, they'll clap their hands, but never have become a true Come on. Come on. worshiper. So it only lasts as long as the music lasts. Wow. Wow. It only lasts as long as you're playing a song, as long as somebody else is yeah. doing it. But listen, there's a place mm -hmm. in God where when you find that place of becoming a true worshiper in spirit, out of your own spirit, connecting with him, and in truth, mm. that's one of the areas a lot of times that we mess up in because we think we can just do it any old kind of way. But God is requiring us to come before him in truth. That may mean that you have to be like this woman at the well. Mm -hmm. come on. You are right. Uh -huh. <laughs> when Jesus said That's good. She, th she had been married so many times and the man she was with, she was just living with. She said, you are correct by her behaviors. Mm -hmm. We have to come in truth to him yeah. and watch That's what good. he does 
in us when we become true worshipers. And take the time to read the rest of that story because that woman became somebody great <laughs> in the kingdom. That's she right. became a great evangelist. Yes, yes she, she did. Because she left her water pot. Yes, she <laughs> yeah. All right, if you need prayer for anything that's on your heart, the number is there, 888-665-4483. We're going to take a break for some anointed worship as Pastor Rebecca sings for us, praise. I'll praise all the mountain. Yes, I'll praise when I'm sure. Praise when I'm doubting. I'll praise when I'm numbered. And praise when surrounded. Cause praise is the water. Yeah, my enemies drown me. As long as Oh, if you have just tuned into the program, you are watching Move Your Mountain. We've been looking at the story of the woman at Jacob's well. And uh, first of all, how Jesus 
talk to her about living water. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting, he sat at a well with natural water, but then he transitioned over into the spirit and the living water that would quench her thirst mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. And if you have never My. drank of that living water, we want you to know today as we've been talking about, you know, you could try to fill your life with power, with love, with alcohol, with so many things, but nothing will satisfy. Mm. It's almost like there's a, there's a void inside of you that nothing mm -hmm. will fill but Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus went on to say that he's looking for people that will be baptized in the Holy Spirit and be filled, be true worshipers and worship Him in spirit and in truth. So if you're not born again, you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus. We're not talking about a religion. Or if you are not baptized in the Holy Spirit, I'll tell you, this passage, it's like a full gospel story all wrapped yeah. in one. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, one of the amazing things when I read this story is that the woman doesn't question what Jesus is offering her. Mm -hmm. She doesn't question his ability to, th that it exists. Her question is, well, how am I going to get it? Uh -huh. And for some of you watching right now, you, you haven't experienced being born again mm -hmm. by the Spirit. Or as a born again person, you have not experienced being baptized or, or infilled, overflowed by the Spirit. And your question isn't, is it real? So th those of you who don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior right now, you, you, you've heard it enough, but you're like, how do I get it? Or those who aren't born again, how do I receive the baptism, the infilling of the Holy Spirit? Do you know what Jesus, it's the same answer Jesus gives to the woman. He says, ask That's right. and I will give. That's right. So right now, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I mean, a saving one, everyone has a relationship with Jesus. Stranger is a relationship. Acquaintance is a relationship. Mm -hmm. But a, a saving relationship where he is, as he says he is, the Lord and deliverer of your life. Your only sacrifice for sins, your only way to the Father. If you don't have that relationship with Jesus, then I just want to encourage you right now to ask him. Mm -hmm. Say, Jesus, I want to have that kind of relationship. And you might say, well, I don't know how to ask. It's very simple. Say, Lord, I've heard your word and I believe it to be true, that you are the Lord and Savior of the world, that you are God, and that you are my only way to the Father and you are my only propitiation, the only payment for my sin. And so, God, I ask to receive your life now. I give you my life. This is yes. an exchange. You don't get to keep the old you and put Jesus on top of it. The old you has to go. And you say, I give, I give up that old life mm -hmm. to receive yours. And I ask you to heal me, mind, soul, and body. I ask you to wash my sins. I ask you to, to let me experience the presence of your spirit inside of me to know that I'm born again. And if you ask him, he'll give. And if you say, well, I want to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, ask. Say, God, I've heard that there is more. I want more of your expression in my life, more of your love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I want that in my life. I want your power, your dunamis, and your exousia to be operating in my life. Just ask him. And he'll give. He'll give. Amen. Amen. Call a prayer partner if you would like to talk further with anyone. The number is there, 888-665-4483. We're going to take Holy Communion together. If you have your elements, let's get them now. A cracker, a piece of bread, some juice in a cup. Pastor Rebecca, would you pray over the bread together with us? 
Father, we just thank you and we worship you for who you are, God, for being the one who gave your life for us, God. You took the stripes on your back so that we could have healing, God, not only physical, but mental, spiritual, most of all, Lord God. But by your stripes, God, and with your stripes, we were and are healed. And Father, we stand on that today and we just thank you right now for your body that you freely gave to us so that we could have freedom from all of the things that bind us and keep us in ourselves, God. You have set us free. We thank you for your body that you have given so freely to us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. All right, take your cracker, your piece of bread, eat of it now, and just let healing virtue go through your body and be healed and made whole. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, there's someone's shoulder right now. It's just being oh, loosed, unfrozen. You've had, you couldn't lift your arm. Just lift it up right now. Jesus has healed you. There's someone else. You've got like a, a heat, heat sensation going down your back right now. God just healing vertebrae, healing sciatica nerves in the lower part of your back. Healing virtue is flowing right now through you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for loving us so much that before the foundation of the world, there was a lamb in your heart, in your mind, that was slain for us. Jesus, we thank you for being so willing to take on yourself the penalty for sin. You tasted death so that we could be saved from death. And so we thank you for the blood. We thank you and we remember now that it is the blood that takes away our sins. We know that the shedding of blood, without it, there would be no remission of sin. So we thank you even now as we remember what you did for us. Yes. All right, take your cup and drink and be washed and cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Thank you, There's someone watching. You've been estranged from a teenage child. You haven't heard from them in a long, long time. And with all that's going on with all of this child trafficking, you've been so tormented whether your teenagers gotten up in, into all of that. But I'm, I just hear the Lord saying today, he's bringing the prodigal home. He's bringing the prodigal home. Lord, with loving kindness, you know where that child is. Yes. You know how to find them, Lord. Draw them home yes, again Jesus. in Jesus Christ's name. Oh, God. Thank you. There's somebody watching that you have, you want to believe all that's been taught, all that's been said, but you have this feeling of hopelessness in you. And today you felt some hope stirred up. That's the Spirit of God yes, yes. stirring hope. The Spirit of God, the scriptures say, will cause hope to abound in you. Mm -hmm. And you see that faith is the substance of what you hope for. Don't give up on God. You gave up on some people in your life and you just decided to take every day and just leave people alone, but God said, I am healing you in this particular area so that you will know that I am God and you will know that I have loved you and there is hope in God. So look for that to continue, that the Spirit of God in you, we've been talking about being filled and full of the Spirit of God. Let Him stir in you and fill you, cause hope to abound in you on today. Yeah. Thank you, my God. Well, if you are blessed by programs like Move Your Mountain, we have a wonderful lineup 
of programs we produce in-house. Our hope today is our flagship program. We have hard questions, sister to sister. We have Nashville today. We have our, our Arlene's program, which has just been on for so many years, a favorite of many of yours, Origins. Yes. So many wonderful programs we produce right here in house. And then of course, we've got our lineup of national programs. David Jeremiah, the 700 Club, which has been on with us for since the very beginning. Charles Stanley and Joseph Prince, Joyce Meyer, so many Messianic Jewish programs. We've got children's programs on in the afternoons and on Saturday mornings. But listen, we can only bring all of those to you by your prayers and by your partnership, by you seeing Cornerstone Television as ground worth investing in. If you are not a partner, maybe you're a faithful viewer, but you've never supported us, would you consider sowing a seed? It could be one time or monthly. I'm gonna give you our address. It's Cornerstone Television Network. The address is One Signal Hill Drive. We're in Wall, Pennsylvania, 15148-1499. Cornerstone Television, One Signal Hill Drive, Wall, Pennsylvania, 15148-1499. We're going to thank you in advance, in faith, for responding to this need. We're going to head over to the altar while Pastor Rebecca sings for us that faithful hymn, Blessed Assurance.
Join us at the Altar of Miracles. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm so blessed to be a part of this team that's able to pray for you today because we know that God is the worker of miracles. We have the blessed assurance to know that he has it all taken care yeah. of. And to live with that blessed assurance. Yes. There's nothing like it. When you're by yourself, a lot of times we look for a crowd to hype us up, but this works when you are by yourself and no one is encouraging you. The Spirit of God will encourage you in Him. Right. And I just love that blessed assurance well, that I possess. Well, that's what makes blessed assurance work is that the, it, 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 you're assured even when everything else in your life seems like it's Amen. not there. That's why it's blessed. And so you whatever see. you're going through right now, whatever, there's still time you can jump on the phone, 888-665-4483. Prayer partner will agree with you. Yes. We'll add it to the many, many prayer requests here on the altar, but take heart in that blessed assurance. There, there's just, mm -hmm. there, there's something powerful and prophetic mm -hmm. about the reality that even in spite of our circumstances, we have assurance that God yeah, is in the it. midst. Amen. That's it. And the Bible speaks so profoundly about the prayer of agreement. Mm -hmm. So let's agree, there's no distance in the Holy Spirit, wherever you're watching, set yourself in agreement, first with God and then with us. And I believe He will not withhold what it is you're believing for. Amen. So would you begin, Amen. Pastor Myra? Father, we thank you and we praise you for the privilege to call on your name. We thank you. We can pray in the name of Jesus yes. and know mm -hmm. that you will move on behalf of mm -hmm. everyone who has called or written yes. in faith 
even those that didn't have opportunity and are watching right now. We pray for them as well. Father, have your way in each of their lives. Have your way and be glorified in each of their circumstances. There are not too many for you. There are not anything, mm -hmm. no things Come on. Yes. that are too great for you. No things that yes. are too small for you. You care about everything. Yes. And we take the position of the psalmist who said, you will perfect the things that concern us. Mm. And so we pray for each of these concerns and we know that you are going to answer and be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Would you slip God. over to the piano, Pastor Myra? Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just thank you and praise Glory. you, Lord Jesus, for who you are. You are our mighty God. You are our peace giver. You are our sustainer, Lord Jesus, so that no matter what we are going through right now, you already have the provision to take care of it. And Father, we just thank you, Lord God, that we can agree together knowing that you are working it out, God. You're bringing healing into lives, Lord, where they've gotten a bad report from the doctor. You're bringing families back together where there have been children that have gone out and searched in the world for the satisfaction. But like this woman at the well, Jesus reminds her that there is living water, Lord. You're bringing those children back home, Lord God, to the place where they recognize that you are their source. You are the only thing that is going to satisfy. Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're breaking addiction off of people right now. Lord, there's requests for family members, for friends that are bound by addiction. Yes. Lord, we pray right now that in the name of free. Jesus, Set that you free. would just let them be whole and free in your name, that every bondage that has captured them, that they thought they were not going to be able to break free from God, that your word, your blood has set them free. The cross has set them free. And Jesus, we thank you that they are not maybe, but they are truly free God. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. And we stand on that promise today, God. Lord, for every other need that is represented here, Lord, that we may not read. You already know it. You know they are here, Lord Jesus. And Father, we ask that you would minister, that you would bring hope, that you would bring healing, health. Lord, that you would take care of financial needs, God. Lord, yes. do what only you can do in the lives of those that have called and written in today. And Father, we thank you for it in your precious and powerful name, Jesus. God, we just thank you for the infilling and overflowing of your Holy Spirit. And right now, we just pray in the Spirit. We thank you, God, even right now with, with groans and unctions that, uh, because we don't know what to say, God. We, we thank you, though. We thank you today with the fruit of gratefulness on our lips, Lord God. And we thank you for the answers to these prayers, Lord God to every prayer for financial breakthrough, Lord God. We thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. We pray for every prayer of deliverance, every prayer for wisdom and guidance because you will give when we ask without finding fault. We thank you, Lord God, that for every, every issue of disunity in families right now, Lord God, you're bringing them together. You're uniting families right now, Lord God. We thank you for every physical need, Lord God, yes, that you are not only the healer, but you are the manufacturer. You hold the warranty. And so, Lord God, we come to you today asking you to heal and to deliver, to set free, to restore, to redeem, to refresh, because it's in your will to do these things, Lord God. And we pray for those who are far from you, prodigal sons and daughters who have wandered away from the faith, Lord God, Bring them back. Yes, Jesus. Let them see the pig pen of their lives and bring them back into the safety of your house. Don't let the fear of, of, of what people might think or say, don't let the, the fear of judgment keep them from coming back into your presence where you can fall on their neck, kiss them, remove their filthy garments and give them a robe and sandals for their feet and a ring to signify their sonship or their daughtership. Father, call them home now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, you said to Jeremiah, you've given us authority over nations and kingdoms to root out, pull down, cast out, and cast down, to build and to plant. And we 
bind that strong man yes, Satan Jesus. over yes. every life, every Lord, family, Lord. over your health, your finances, your spiritual life. And we pray for breakthrough in the name of Jesus for you today. Amen and amen. Well, Pastor Meyer is going to take us out with a beautiful song of worship as you just lift your hands and receive today your answer to prayer. Remember your childhood joy and excitement when being invited to a party? You felt valued, included, wanted, and ready to have a good time. Best-selling author Bob Goff believes that every day of life can be lived with the same childlike enthusiasm and sense of humor. Inside Love Does, you'll learn that love is a verb, not just a feeling. His insights and joyful reflections will help you discover what it means to live fully alive, even as you serve others. Prepare to encounter remarkable stories from Bob Goff's life as he shares how living and loving to the fullest is the best way to make Jesus known in this world. Request your copy of Love Does when you give your best gift this month. Your gift today will help Cornerstone Television show the life-changing love of Jesus through Christ-centered TV programs. Call us at 888-665-4483 or give at ctvn.org slash donate. Mm -hmm.